I made a video not long ago. You can see it on the screen there, NixOS number 63, called install NixOS 2311 and use Flakes out of the box. That detailed how to get NixOS 2311 configured in Flakes mode right after it was first installed. And the purpose of the video was to demonstrate that a NixOS Flake is just kind of a layer on top of Nix legacy configuration.nix configuration. And in that video, I made a claim. I said, using a Flake to configure your NixOS systems really is better than using legacy mode configuration. But I didn't much substantiate that claim, except by sort of hand-waving about how you can add another host as a named NixOS system to the outputs of your Flake. I'd like to remedy that hand-waving a bit. In this video, I'll dive in a little deeper and I'll set up three NixOS machines. They will cleverly be named host one, host two, and host three. All the hosts will share a common set of globally available programs and services. We'll have the user environment and the home manager configuration of a user named Alice. So that'll be on host one, host two, and host three. Host three will additionally have the user environment and the home manager configuration of a user named Bob. Alice and Bob will share a common base set of home manager configuration stuff. Are you with me so far? We're gonna have three hosts. They're gonna share a common set of globally available program services. On all three of the hosts, Alice will be configured. On only one of the hosts, we'll have Bob. And Bob and Alice will share a common set of home manager and user configuration stuff. However, they will be able to specialize as necessary. In addition, host one, will have a system level system D service running on it that, it that isn't running on host two or host three. And, 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 and host two will have a special home manager configuration for the Alice user. In particular, it will run a user level system D service as Alice. <laughs> I bet you can't wait for that. Last but not least, host three. That's right, host three will have a special home manager configuration for the Bob user. It'll add additional shell aliases for Bob that aren't shared by Alice at all. I know that's that's a lot to take in, but it's kind of complicated. It's you know you got it's complicated. It really is, you know. But th that's the point. This this NixOS lets you get it under control. We'll be able to deploy a host with some number of user environments. You know, Alice and Bob. Those user environments can share base pool of settings, but we can specialize them as necessary. And we can deploy multiple hosts, each with a common set of programs and system level configuration but specializable settings and system level configuration can be tied to a particular host. Bottom line is that we can share the vast majority of host configuration between hosts and the vast majority of user configuration between users. But in a pinch, NixOS plus home manager will let us get very granular. Of course, this is totally doable on other systems using, I mean, something like Ansible or, or even just, you know, roll your own, whatever. And some imperative, you know, per host, per user setup code. But the magic in Nix is that we do it all declaratively within these Nix files. Uh, we've been watching uh, our, our Nix uh, installer go, and I'm gonna set up our first host after it gets done. I'm gonna start right where the Nix OS installer left off. Um, we're gonna set up this host that we wanna call host one. We need to modify the default configuration to put it into flakes mode. And then we need to check our resulting Etsy Nix OS files into a Git repository and push it all up to GitHub. If you want more context about flakes, watch the flakes out of the box video that I made a, a month or so ago. Uh, there will be a link to this talkie script in the description in which there will be a link to the flakes out of the box video. So the first thing we want to do is change some permissions so we don't have to sudo all the time. I will sudo Joan. And then we're going to change some configuration uh, before we switch to flakes mode about our host name, we're gonna enable an SSH server. We're gonna enable Git and our favorite editor so we don't have to use nano. No fun. Uh, and I'll add some configuration to our configuration.nix that lets us use flakes. Let's see, nano. I'm gonna change the host name. Uh, where's the host name? I want this host name to be host one. I want to enable the SSH server, add a couple packages to our system packages. Get Emacs, I might as well do them while I'm in here. Add some configuration so that we can use Flakes commands with Nix. That will let us run various Nix Flake related commands later. Let's correct IP address, good. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to rebuild. Switch 
to reboot to get the host name change activated. Alrighty. Now I'm going to from my host machine here, not my not my virtual machine. I'm going to copy over my SSH configuration to the host so I have my SSH public private key pair in the .ssh directory of my VM's home directory. I'll just be typing it here, you won't see anything. Okay, now I should be able to do outbound SSH, which, which I will need for Git in a bit. I'm going to edit, now that I have the public side of my, my key, I'm going to edit the configuration and add this to my user config. Right. I'm going to configure Git for first time use. I'm going to add a flake.nix file to this directory. This configuration names exactly one Nix host configuration, named host one, which matches our host name. So it will be found when we run our Nix OS rebuild. First, we have to create a Git repository in here so that we can add our files to it and share them between our machines. It add Just try to run Nixos Rebuild Switch. The fact that I added flake.nix there should put us into flakes mode. Okay, this is going to take a while because it's updating the software that we have installed on the machine. So I'll be back when it is finished. Now, we you know it works. So let's go make a Git repository. Uh, a GitHub repository, I should say, that will hold all of our configuration for all of our hosts. I'm going to stop this recording and make a new one so that I can capture me doing that. Per host. And take all the defaults. Now we're going to commit the code that I have in my virtual machine status add the flake.lock that got created as a result of running nixos rebuild switch We're going to accept the changes to .nix. okay so now i'm going to commit this add a remote repository yeah, we're going to push it up. You. No, oh, master. Okay. Show sure enough. There's our stuff. And we're basically where we were at the end of my flakes out of the box video, where we have a single host configured using flakes mode. We can now go ahead and factor our configuration such that we have more than one host and we have different configuration per host. In my flakes out of the box video, I hand waved about changing flake.nix so that we can use the same Git repository to man manage not just one host, but two or more hosts. Let's change things around so that we can actually do that now. We wanna leave most of the networking, the services, desktop environment, user stuff, program configuration, and whatnot in a shared file. And what that means is I'm going to leave most of our configuration within configuration.nix. That configuration.nix will represent the set of configuration that wants to be shared between machines. We don't want the hardware configuration.nix to be shared between multiple hosts. Each host will have its own hardware configuration in a Nix file named after the host instead. And we also need to move some configuration that isn't appropriate to share between hosts from configuration.nix into that file. We haven't got to factoring out our user configuration or adding in home manager yet, 
We'll do that in a little bit. Got to do this first. We're going to rename hardwareconfiguration.next to host1.next. So in order to do that, I'm going to do git move hardwareconfiguration.next to host1.next. Like that. And I'm going to edit configuration.next. We no longer have a file named hardware configured configuration.next. And it is not appropriate to have hardware configuration inside of configuration.next anymore. So we'll take it out. I'm going to edit host1.next now, which is what used to be hardware configuration.next. I'm going to add an import of configuration.next in here. Like that. I'm going to move some of the configuration that isn't appropriate to share between hosts from configuration.next into, into host1.next. And that is the bootloader stuff and networking host name. I think that's all we need. Just gonna push that there. I'm going to change Blake.next such that modules list for host1 no longer refers to configuration.next, but refers to host1.next. I think that's all we need to do. At this point, we no longer have a hardware configuration.next. We've renamed that to host1.next, and host1.next has both the hardware configuration in it as well as some stuff that used to live in configuration.next that's not appropriate to share between hosts. Let's see if we can XOS Rebu rebuild switch. And we can. And if you notice, nothing actually changed. We moved some stuff around in Nix files, but as far as Nix is concerned, nothing eventful happened, so it didn't really make any changes to our configuration. Uh, it's just that we rename some files and move some stuff around, but it doesn't care about that. It cares about the materialized stuff in our next files, which we did not actually change. But we do need to push this up to our GitHub repository. Okay. Oh, I'm now going to add a second host to our configuration. I'm, I'm going to create a second virtual machine using the NixOS installer again, and then I'll make some changes to the result. I'm going to repeat some of the steps I took in the last stage. Okay, here we are after a fresh NixOS installer. First thing I need to do is change our configuration such that I can contact this machine on the network. I'm going to change this host name to host2. I'm going to add Vim and friends to our system packages. And enable the SSH server. Rebuild. To reboot to get the host name change activated. Copy my SSH keys over from my host to the VM. Configure Git for first time use. And I'm not going to make any more changes to the uh, existing Etsy configuration next. As a matter of fact, I'm going to move it aside. Clone the repository of our shared configuration. Move that such that it becomes Etsy NexOS. And I'm going to copy the hardware configuration of that the installer gave us, which is still exists over at XOS aside. into host2.next. I'm then going to edit, host, edit host2.next. Actually, I need to change this. 
Check his permissions first. <laughs> add a host to next. And I'm going to add configuration next to its import list. I'm going to copy some of the stuff that's in the original Nix OS Asides hard configuration.nix. I'm going to take it and I'm going to copy the bootloader stuff and the networking host name. And I'm going to put it inside of stew.nix. Like so. And then the real magical step. Add another host to our Nix OS configurations list. Call it host2. And we're going to point it at host2.nix. i got to add host2.nix. We'll get staging area. And then I'm going to Nix OS rebuild. Which we should be in flex mode. And we are. Well, we now have a second system, which shares most of its configuration with the first system. In fact, the only real difference between them is the host name. We now have a place to hang host-specific configuration. If we, if we want to do something special on host1, we can add stuff to host1.nix. And likewise, if we want to make something special happen on host2, we can add it to host2.nix. Changes we make to some host-specific file won't be reflected in the configuration of any other host. So I'm going to repeat the dance I just did for host2 to make a host3, at which point we'll start to be able to make the host-specific and, and user-specific specializations I promised in the introduction to this video. And that'll have to do it for part one. In the next part, as threatened, I'll set up user accounts for Alice and Bob, and I will specialize some configuration per host. Thanks for watching.